Hey guys, my name is Max and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video, we're going to be talking about mitochondria and chloroplasts. Now, both of these organelles are well known for their ability to convert different forms of energy in a cell, and they have a huge role in all the energy conversions that go on in the cell. Um, now, of course, as you probably already know, cells need energy to survive. They use energy uh, in order to make chemical reactions happen and maintain the right shape and size and loads of other things. So obviously these two organelles are going to be very important when we look at the whole, uh, the whole cell. So the first one that we're going to talk about is mitochondria. Uh, and now it's also known when you talk about a singular one as a mitochondrion uh, with, a, with an N. So make sure you know that distinction. But their main role is in cellular respiration. That's what they're, uh, that's what they're used for. Now, most of cellular res respiration, a large majority of it, occurs in the mitochondria. We'll be talking more about cellular respiration in a couple of our later videos, but the mitochondria are incredibly important for this. This process produces what's known as ATP. It's basically the energy currency of the cell. It's, it's what the cell uses as energy. There's actually a double membrane around mitochondria, which is kind of interesting because most, most organelles don't have a double membrane. Uh, it's really just uh, mitochondria, chloroplasts, we'll talk about later, and uh, I guess the nucleus. But uh, that double membrane is going to uh, is gonna play a role in something we'll talk about later. So I'll make sure you remember that. And as far as uh, the anatomy, I guess, of the mitochondria goes, uh, know that criste, uh, this word right here, are the folds in the inner membrane. So they're these like little red, um, they look like little sacs, they're like, the cristae, the there's folds in the inner membrane. So know what that is. Now next we have chloroplasts. And uh, like, like uh, mitochondria, they're in, important for energy conversions, but in this case, it's photosynthesis rather than in cellular respiration. Oops. And uh, what this process does is it takes light, it takes the energy from the sun, and uses it to produce sugars out of like carbon dioxide and water. So it produces these sugars, and these sugars will then be used for energy in the cell. Like mitochondria, it has a double membrane. Again, we'll be talking about that a little bit more later. And for the anatomy, you have to know that these thylakoids that we talk about are these flattened discs. So just like one disc, whereas grana are like a whole stack of these discs. Um, so know the difference between a thylakoid and a grana, uh, and later on we'll learn what goes on inside these thylakoids, why they're there. Again, go check out our, our uh, photosynthesis videos if you want more information on that. But that's really it for chloroplasts for right now. Now, next we're going to talk about the endosymbiont theory. Um, that looks like a lot, but I'm going to break it down for you in just a second. This is where we're talking about that double membrane. That's uh, one of the things that plays a role in this theory. And the theory states that early on in life's history, before there were any eukaryotes, there was some prokaryote uh, that uh, didn't use oxygen, that was actually poisoned by oxygen, so it was called anaerobic. There was this anaerobic prokaryote, I'm going to write that here, anaerobic, and that's this blue one, and it engulfed another prokaryote. For this, uh, for this case, I drew it very similar to a mitochondria, uh, and this other prokaryote was aerobic. And so uh, this large anaerobic prokaryote engulfed this smaller aerobic prokaryote. It didn't look exactly like a mitochondria, but probably fairly similar. And uh, they're not really sure how it happened, whether it was eating it or whether the smaller one was a parasite that was living inside the larger one. But eventually they came to live in symbiosis. Now symbiosis, um, uh, for, the for these purposes, it was mutualism. <clears throat> And it's where there's some sort of relationship between two organisms, and it was actually beneficial for both. The, the small aerobic bacteria w was out of the way of most harm. It was no longer uh, at the risk of being eaten, I guess, <laughs> since it was already eaten. And then the anaerobic bacteria could now use oxygen for an advantage instead of being poisoned by it. So they both benefited from this relationship. And what actually happened was that the inner prokaryote, this aerobic prokaryote, eventually evolved into the mitochondria. Again, I drew it like this, and it wouldn't actually have the double membrane at this point. Uh, the outer membrane originally came from the anaerobic bacteria. So uh, this is just kind of a representation. But 
it eventually evolved into mitochondria. And later on, this process happened again for chloroplasts with some sort of cyanobacteria. But that, that's really all that the endosymbiont theory uh, is talking about. Endo means inside, and symbiont, of course, is talking about symbiosis. So, symbiont. And so the endosymbiont theory is that it just means there is, oh, sorry, symbiosis. So really, just the endosymbiont theory is that the mitochondria and the chloroplasts evolved from some sort of symbiosis between two prokaryote organisms. But what's the evidence for this theory? Why, why do we even care? There's actually quite a bit of it, and I'm going to go into it. Uh, first off, mitochondria and chloroplasts actually have their own DNA. And not only that, but they have circular DNA. So if you look inside a, a, a mitochondria or chloroplast, this is just kind of a generic drawing, they'll have this DNA, but it'll be in one large uh, ring chromosome, a circular chromosome, which is similar to the uh, DNA that you will find in prokaryotes. So it's, it's very interesting that within your own cells as a eukaryote, there is these mitochondria and chloroplasts that have the DNA of a prokaryote. That these mitochondria and chloroplasts are more similar to a prokaryote than they, are, than they are to your own cells. In addition to this, they also have um, ribosomes kind of scattered around. And these ribosomes, uh, just like the ribosomes in your own cells, are used to, uh, to manufacture proteins that will then be used in the mitochondria or chloroplasts. And these ribosomes, again, are more similar to the ribosomes that you'll find in prokaryotes than to the ribosomes you'll find in eukaryotes. They're smaller, they've got some of those same RNA sequences. They're just more similar to prokaryote ribosomes, which again, that's pretty crazy that your your mitochondria, your mitochondria, not your chloroplasts, you don't have a chloroplast, but the mitochondria in your cells are more similar to prokaryotes than they are to your own cells. Again, uh, like I was saying earlier, they have a double membrane, which indicates that at some point they crossed uh, the membrane of your own cell in order to get that extra one. And they're similar in size to a prokaryote. I'm not going to draw that. But um, if there was a prokaryote to come live inside one of your cells, it would be about the size of mitochondria or chloroplasts, which, again, that's kind of a strong correlation, kind of pr uh, providing evidence for the endosymbiont theory. So mitochondria and chloroplasts are really just as simple as that. 